Our next guest says that if the West, the United States and Europe can provide the weapons, Ukraine stands a chance to take Vladimir Putin down. Alexei Goncharenko is a member of the Ukrainian parliament. He's also part of the Ukrainian delegation to the European Parliament in Strasbourg, where he joins us now. Alexei, thank you very much for being with us today. Uh, you've said that Russia's badly losing this war following uh, Ukrainian advances on the battlefield out in the east, northeast, and down in the south. So what would you say Ukraine, the military, needs the most right now? Yes, thank you. Um, we need most tanks, long-range uh, missiles, and air defense. Air defense, it's clear why uh, the whole world saw this horrific uh, scenes of um, rockets just falling on the heads of children and women in the peaceful cities. But uh, long-range missiles and tanks, why? Because we should make lessons. Uh, if in the end of March, Ukraine would have weaponry that we have today, Hovitzers, um, high marses. We would finish everything in spring when Russians were retreating from Kiev, disorganized after their failed blitzkrieg. We could finish everything, but unfortunately, we had not with what to purchase them. Now it's again the moment because uh, Russians are again disorganized. They are waiting for newly mobilized troops to strengthen their lines. But if today Ukraine will receive this powerful weaponry, long range missiles, because we already have high marses. But I don't know why only with short-range missiles. And if we will receive tanks, because for the moment we have not received any one Western tank. So with this, we can achieve two, three more military victories. And I think that Putin's regime would not survive uh, these uh, defeats, because already it's shaking inside. Uh, certainly the Ukrainians have proved themselves on the battlefields. And, and Alexei, when I was... In Ukraine in, in February and then in, in April, the sense of solidarity in the country was so strong. Now, after these most recent attacks, 26 Ukrainians at least have died uh, after these attacks over the past couple of days. How, how is morale? How is this affecting the people of, of not just Kiev, but of Ternopil, of places that had not seen many attacks previously? Yeah. Moral is high. You know, even uh, despite the awful attacks, certainly people are concerned. Certainly people are afraid for their children and themselves. But at the same time, Putin tried to threaten Ukrainians and to scare Ukrainians. But the result is completely opposite. We are furious. We are furious about what's going on. We are confident in our victory. We just want to, it to happen as soon as possible. And will be also in benefit of the whole world. Because all these crises, energy crisis, inflation, food crisis, everything is caused by Russia and their politics. They just want as much chaos as possible. So the way out of all these crises is one, is clear Ukrainian victory and restoration of international law and order by restoration of territorial integrity of Ukraine. So that is the mood in the country. And again, we believe in our victory. We know that we have partners in France and, first of all, the United States. But we ask to support us more today to finish this war. Uh, Alexei, a, a, a cornered Vladimir Putin on the road to defeat if, if, in fact, he is a dangerous Vladimir Putin. And here in the United States, President Biden has been asked and he's been speaking openly about the possibility that Vladimir Putin will use nuclear weapons on the battlefield in Ukraine. He says he doesn't think it's... It's likely, but you don't know with this kind of a threat. How are Ukrainians viewing that possibility? Could Ukraine become a nuclear battlefield? Certainly, we don't want this. It's to say at least, yeah. Uh, and certainly we are concerned uh, with this. But the answer is only one. You should understand that Russia understands only one language, language of force. And yes, Putin is becoming more and more desperate, and these attacks showed it. He can't win over our army. That's why he takes revenge on our civilians. But uh, he, still, uh, he still wants to leave, at least. Uh, mm -hmm. Like President Biden said, he's rational. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, the only thing which would prevent Putin of even thinking about nukes is a clear signal, first of all, from the United States, that this will be his personal suicide. And that is very important. And I want mm -hmm. to tell you that it should be prevented in the minimum uh, way possible. Because even if Putin will make some demonstration attack on the territory of Ukraine, even without victims, with some small 
tactical nuclear weaponry. That will mean that the world uh, is in danger because that will be the end Absolutely. of nuclear non-proliferation policy in the world. And in 10, Absolutely. 20 years, there will be t t uh, dozens of countries with nukes and sooner or later will be big uh, nuclear war. So this should be prevented. It would be a fateful step, and there's no question that the United States is communicated there'd be dire consequences if Russia took it. But finally, what do you make of Elon Musk? Elon Musk essentially proposing uh, that you guys go to the table, surrender the territory, uh, do a peace deal. Uh, he told someone that he'd talked to Vladimir Putin before that. What do you make of all this Elon Musk involvement in, in what's happening in your country? You know, uh, first, if Elon Musk wants to surrender something, give, give up something, uh, he can give up his uh, shares of Tesla uh, or part <laughs> of his wealth. Uh, that is something which is his, and Ukrainian lands are not his. Also, I would like him to, to, to watch in eyes of uh, hundreds of thousands of Ukrainians who are now on, on occupied territories and Russia is committing genocide. And that is not political expression. That is juridical one, genocide against these people. So we can't left them under genocide. So, you know, mm. to be a great entrepreneur and to be billionaire doesn't mean that you are expert in geopolitics. And that, we see right. it again. So I, my, my proposition to Elon Musk is to make business, not to make uh, geopolitics and some strange propositions. All right. Good advice for Elon Musk there, Alexei Goncharenko. Thank you very much. Thank Good you. luck in your work. Thanks. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.